There we go. Hi there. So uh, uh, I guess Murphy is working today. Here. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about Acts chapter Acts chapter uh, 19. Um, we're in 19. And um, the whole point of this is that when the gospel impacts financial life, financial finances and financial impact, there's trouble around the corner. And the impact here are a group of craftsmen who are silversmiths, and they create little, little, little um, Artemis uh, um, dolls or Artemis statues. Um, you know her perhaps by her Latin name, Diana. There's a large temple in Ephesus. The priesthood is female. This is the guard, their, their realm. Um, all of the officials who worked in that temple were female. And Artemis uh, or Diana brought a great deal of money. And this, a um, craftsman by the name of Demetrius is upset. And so they now start to assemble in the amphitheater. And as I just said, the amphitheater seats 25,000 people. So here they are, greatest Artemis of the Ephesians. The city was filled with the uproar and the crowd rushed to the theater together, dragging with them Gaius and Aristarchus, the Macedonians who were Paul's traveling companions. But when Paul wanted to enter the public assembly, the disciples would not let him. Even some of the provincial authorities who were his friends sent a message to him, urging him not to venture into the theater. So then some were shouting one thing, some another, for the assembly was in confusion. And this is the line I love the most. And most of them did not know why they had, what the, why they had, met, why they had met together. <laughs> most of them had no idea why they were there. And there's Luke, there, there's, there's the, the historian. Uh, hi, one group is shouting this, another group is shouting that. For the most part, mo nobody knew why they were there. And that's, you can see this, the, the, we, we get this, you know, there's something going on and you join in and it's like, what's this all about? I have no idea. Um, what, what, you know, and, and this, is, this is human life. Um, this is this was what makes the book of Acts so so interesting, so interesting. And, and Luke is honest and says, "Well, most of them had no idea why they were there. Just there was an uproar, and they saw that they would join in. Why are we here? We have no idea. But it's something to do today. Um, since there's nothing on TV, we might as well do this. So here we are. Here we are coming together. And some of the crowd concluded it was about Alexander because the Jews had pushed him to the front." Alexander, gesturing with his hand, was wanting to make a defense before the public assembly. But when they recognized that he was a Jew, they shouted in unison, great is Artemis of the Ephesians, for about two hours. So we know the demonstration is going on for about two hours. Now, what is interesting is they put, they put Alexander up there and they tell, oh, he's Jewish. And it's like, oh, get him out of here. Why? Because he was, he was going to, he was, the Jews, the Jew, Jewish community would not have purchased the Artemis statues, okay? Because in Judaism, you cannot make an engraven image. You cannot make an engraven image. And so these were idols that were being sold and it had, they, they were not a part of the, the financial, they were not a part of the financial profit that was headed to these craftsmen. So when they found out he's, he's a Jew, it's like, I'll send him away. He's, he's not gonna help this cause at all. So they, they send them away. And then they, again, they go back, great is Artemis of the Ephesians, great is Diana of the Ephesians. Now, what is happening here? Um, all right, let, let, hold. So for two hours, after the city secretary quieted the crowd, he said, men of Ephesus, what person is there who does not know that the city of Ephesians is the keeper of the temple of the great Artemis and of her image that fell from heaven? So what are we talking about fell, that fell from heaven? Um, pers this is the scribe. Uh, the, uh, the secretary is the grammarian. In, in Greek, it's the gram grammarian. It can be, a, it's a scribe. In other words, a person who could, who, who could write. And he was keeper of the city records. So he might've been some translation say the mayor. So the mayor sits down and says, excuse me. Now it fell from the sky. What is in the distant past, a meteor landed near um, Ephesus. And it was seen, this meteor was seen as the image of this, the image of Artemis. Hence, this, these, these, these idols, they believed that it was a gift. It was a gift from Artemis to the city of Ephesus, that this meteor came from heaven is there. And it was sort of um, enshrined. It became, it became sort of, a, it became very important uh, to, to, to the Ephesians. That they, they felt this was a divine sign, uh, a divine sign. Um, that, that doesn't go away. Uh, that doesn't go away. Um, 
one of the great stories of, of religion in the Philadelphia area uh, is the story of what we call the Wissahickon mystics. Um, in Wissahickon Park, there was a group called the mystic, there were mystics there. And they, um, the reason they, they believed that the world was coming to an end um, rather soon. And what started this was a meteor in the 1680s. Um, back in Germany, there was a meteor. Um, it might have been Haley's Comet. I forget which one it is, but it, it just, it, several Lutherans got a little unhinged, uh, unhinged when they saw the meteor because they thought it was a divine sign. They took the book of Revelation. And they said, oh, this is the divine sign. The time is about to end. And um, the territorial churches did not, did not um, tolerate dissent. So when this little group started to get together and they were, they were, how should I say, invited to leave, uh, they were asked mm -hmm. to leave. And so where did they come to? They came to Penn, to, to Penn's, Pennsylvania, because it's, it's William Penn's great experiment. And they were allowed to practice their, their, their faith. They are in the Wissahickon area. They had an observatory. Um, they were watching the heavens and it makes sense. They had an observatory. Uh, they were watching the heavens because they believed that was where the sign would come. So this idea of meteors and, and things falling, that was as a divine sign. It's there in the book of Acts. It's there in the 17th century. It's still there in the 17th century as, as comets and signs in the heavens um, worry people. And they felt it was a, a divine moment. The Wissahickon mystics, Kelpius, that's who I was, I was trying to remember his name, Kelpius. Um, they are musicians. They love to, to sing and they uh, lived in the caves. They were, were celibates. Um, the first ordained pastor in the Lutheran church here in this, on this side of the Atlantic Ocean was Justus Faulkner. Justus Faulkner. And they went, he was ordained in Gloria Day. Um, it's now Episcopal, but it's Gloria Day Lutheran Church out in Society Hill. Um, there are seven brick Lutheran churches that um, in the 1790s will become Episcopalian because Swedish has faded away into the background. They're using English. And so they decide to become Episcopalian simply because they use English and the prayer book is there. It looks like the Lutheran service. We're fine. So it's St. Saint, Saint, um, Gloria Day uh, Lutheran Church at the time. You'll see the tomb, the, to the gravestone for the first president of the United States under the Articles of Confederation. He's a Swede. His name is Hansen. Um, Washington is the first president under the Constitution. So it's, it's a very wonderful, wonderful uh, story, wonderful place. They walk from, the, from Wissahickon down to uh, Gloria Day at 1703 for the ordination of Eustace Faulkner. And um, it's very interesting. Um, the Lutheran experience was, how should I say, multicultural. Um, here's, he was a German Lutheran. Uh, he was raised, uh, he, was, he was not ordained in Germany, but he had gone to the university and taken his exams in theology, came here to sell land and then decided uh, that wasn't of interest. So he wanted to become a Lutheran pastor. So a German Lutheran goes there in 1703 and Swedish Lutherans ordain him to the pastorate. Why? Because he has a call to Dutch Lutherans um, up in New York City. So we were a multicultural, we were a multicultural church right from the very beginning. Um, you know, so we have a German being ordained by Swedes to go serve a, a group of Dutch Lutherans in New York City. So this is a, a multicultural experience. And so the Wissahick and mystics head off in that direction. And they eventually fade away into, they just sort of fade away. Um, Muhlenberg knew of them, but never really met any of them because they had sort of disappeared off, off the radar screen. But there's a little story of how a meteor, a meteor was a great blessing for the city of, of Ephesus. And a meteor was what unhinged a group of people who thought, ah, the world's coming to an end and we need to be prepared and ready for it at any moment. Um, and so we, there was a connection there. So this, her image fell from heaven. So this was the image of Diana that they were then making into these, these, silver, these silver statues that they sold. But now the mayor is saying, so because these facts are indisputable, you must be quiet and not do anything reckless. For you've brought these men here who are neither temple robbers nor blasphemers of our goddess. If then Demetrius and the craftsmen who are with him have a complaint against someone, the courts are open and there are pro councils Let them bring charges against one another there. But if you want anything in addition, it will have to be settled in a legal assembly, for we are in danger of being charged with rioting today. I love that. I love the level-headedness level of this, this uh, the mayor here. Since there is no cause, we can give to explain this disorderly gathering. After he has said this, he dismissed the assembly. 
So it's it's this wonderful this wonderful scene that is described. They are chanting for two hours. Um, you know, Artemis Artemis is great greatest Artemis of Ephesus. It was apparently a very popular uh, cult of pop, pop worshiping group, uh, not just in Ephesus but out in Asia Minor, which is um, Western Turkey. It has and uh, Paul is blamed for having upset the trade and. The mayor is saying that's not the case. Uh, they didn't do anything of, of the sort. And here we are. You need to take this to the courts, not here. You are not the court. You are not the court. You are not the public assembly. And don't assume that power. And so this is a very level-headed mayor who comes in and says, you need to, if you have a case, go to the appropriate court. Don't come here and do this. We are in, we are in danger of being declared a riot. If that happens, then the centurions would be released. In other words, the, the police, the centurions would come to restore order. And in that no moment, nobody would go unpunished. So it was a call to it was a call to call to to be rational about this. And if you have a complaint, take it to where it belongs, not here. Get it out of the public, get it out of the public view, because this is not the place. But the one mo moment that I love is most knew, didn't know why they were there. Most had no idea why they were there. They were just enjoying the moment. Nothing good on TV that day. So here it is. So what I was going to do, I'm going to stop the recording so that we can we can just pause on this. Uh, I'll pause it. And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, guard our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Amen.